Welcome into the New Orleans Saints podcast. You'll hear from players, coaches, broadcasters, and writers that cover the NFL on a daily basis. The New Orleans Saints podcast starts right now. Here's your host, Aaron Summers. Welcome into the New Orleans Saints podcast. It is officially game week. The Saints are taking on the Tennessee Titans to open up the season Sunday, 12 o'clock at the Caesar Superdome. If you don't have your tickets, you can watch it on CBS. We're definitely looking forward to it. And so is head coach Dennis Allen. It was a good practice day. Uh, a lot of energy out there. It's exciting. Opening up the regular season. So um, we got a huge challenge uh, this week against a really good football team. I mean, it's a team that uh, started off the season last year seven and three, and and uh, uh, then their quarterback went out and and uh, you know lost the last seven games. But this is a, this is a really good football team that we're playing and on, on both sides of the ball and in the kicking game. So it'll be a huge test for us opening up the season in the dome. The Titans are led by running back Derrick Henry, who was the second leading rusher in all of the NFL last season, and then they added former two-lane running back Tajay Spears. Their run game is definitely something that the Saints are going to have to focus on. Well, I mean, I don't think there's any uh, question that, you know, this, this team uh, runs a lot of their offense through the running game, particularly Derrick Henry. Uh, obviously, with Tajay Spears being there now, they've got a couple of different runners that they can utilize. Um, but you, you have to be able to stop, you know, the run play action game and, you know, hopefully get them into some uh, longer yardage situations. So <clears throat> that'll be a big part of what we do. Here's defensive end Peyton Turner on slowing down those Titans backs. I think the biggest thing this week, you know, it's not so much about affecting quarterback, it's about getting to the point where you can affect the quarterback. This is a run first team. Uh, they got a great running back, good scheme. So. Just us doing our job, you know, I want to live this defense and fit where we need to fit. I think it's going to lead to success for us on game day. With the first game of the year, that means we got our first official depth chart of the year. And yes, Taysom Hill was listed at quarterback. Head coach Dennis Allen said it was more of a clerical thing not to look too much into it, that Hill took almost 50% of his snaps at the quarterback position last year, so it just makes sense. The Saints could be playing with that new third quarterback rule where you can dress three quarterbacks now. They do have Derek Carr listed as QB1, Jameis Winston QB2, and then Taysom Hill in that third quarterback spot. Either way, there are clearly way more weapons offensively than the Saints had last season. Last year, the Saints had the 22nd scoring offense in the NFL, and they're looking to pack a little more punch this year, starting with that quarterback Derek Carr, the addition of running back Jamal Williams, a healthy Michael Thomas, and not to mention wide receiver Chris Olave, who's looking to build off a big rookie campaign. Uh, I feel good, man. I'm, I'm excited. I'm confident. Uh, real confident in my abilities. And uh, we got a real good team, so I'm excited going to the year. You know, one of the things you wanted to work on was, I guess, strengthening up and, you know, making contested catches. But do you feel like you're just kind of polishing things that, that you already did well, or you feel like, you know, those are things you really needed to build up? Uh, yeah, I, I feel like uh, I had to develop my strengths, too, and make them even stronger and develop my weaknesses, which is those you just stated. So uh, I feel like a completely different player going into year two, and I'm excited. The first injury report will come out Wednesday, so make sure you stay tuned to NewOrleansSaints.com. We already know that we'll be without running back Alvin Kamara as he serves a three-game suspension. Cornerback Marshawn Lattimore has been limited dealing with a knee injury. Kendra Miller, running back, has been dealing with a hamstring injury. So those are a couple names to watch heading in to game one. For some insight into what turned into a very interesting specialist battle all camp and the Saints signing two undrafted free agents in kicker Blake Groupie and punter Lou Headley, today's guest on the podcast is Saints legend and kicking coach John Carney. Carney played four decades in the NFL and is currently fifth in career scoring with 2,062 points. Carney played for the Saints from 2001 to 2006 and again in 2009 to 2010. John, thank you so much for joining me on the New Orleans Saints podcast. It's great to have you. How have you been? How's the summer been? You know, how many camps have you been running out there on the West Coast? Well, thanks for having me on, Aaron. Who dat? Love the Who dat Nation. Uh, yeah, we've been pretty busy this summer out here in California. Uh, we did something 
new this year called a battle of the free agents. So any free agent, kicker, punter, long snapper could uh, compete in this competition. We had it at Saddleback Junior College, which is a really nice facility out here in California. Um, and a modest entry fee. Uh, <clears throat> each position had four stations to go through. They're all skill-specific stations. For instance, a punter would have inside the 20 punts, uh, directional punts, and out-of-the-end zone punts, uh, and things of that nature that you would need to do and, and have that skill set during an NFL season, for that matter. Mm -hmm. And so they all competed, and at the end, the winners – received a $1,500 check. Uh, we got the big giant checks that you see, you know, when guys win, uh, you know, the Indy 500. Um, and then runner up got 550. So it was an opportunity for free agents, not only to compete and to uh, work on their, their, their mental game and sharpen up and get ready for combines and showcases that uh, run throughout the year, but also for these guys to have an opportunity to win some real money and have some fun and have some bragging rights and, and talk a lot of smack. So that was a lot of fun. And then we have our, our launching pad camp. That is for NFL specialists getting ready for training camp and the regular season. That's always two weeks prior to this, uh, to training camp. Uh, we had a lot of young guys this year and, you know, we're going to hit that subject matter later today. A lot of young kickers and punters and snappers that are just starting their NFL career. So it's really good to be able to speak to them as a group because they're all on that first stepping stone into the NFL. Uh, and then we had uh, our preseason, our specialist preseason combine, which is meant for NFL teams to send scouts to see the best free agents on the market that are not in training camp. So each team can have an updated ready list. And that's a lot of fun. Um, and it gives opportunity for these guys to get some more exposure during training camp and preseason. And most of the years after this combine, during the course of the NFL season, we'll have 15 to 20 guys from this combine get workouts or sign contracts during the season. So uh, we do our best to collect the best free agents that, of course, NFL teams need to have ready to go. Kicking can be very fluid. We've seen a lot of different ones around here with the Saints. Uh, when Will Lutz was injured, they went through four that season. And then, of course, they decided to part ways with Lutz just last week, going with the undrafted free agent and Blake Groupie. Before we get into all of that, though, any names, people that stood out for you at these camps that you had recently? Well, sure. Uh, we have a number. Um actually uh, and a number of young guys that I really like that we've seen over the last several years. Um, one is Ramiz Ahmed. Ramiz uh, was with the Green Bay Packers last year for the entire uh, season on the practice squad. It was activated twice at the end of the year and then unfortunately was injured and, and that cost him some workouts in the off season. But um, he's been one of our, our guys that have trained here for several years and really, really good uh, player. Um, Dan Whalen, who just made the Green Bay Packers, ironically, same team, uh, as a rookie, well, second year out from UC Davis, 6'6", six, six, really tall guy, uh, born in Ireland. So the Irish are really excited about this and a uh, very, very good punter. Very, very good. And so Pat O'Donnell, who's a veteran there, he bounced out. So um, that was very exciting. Uh, Tanner Brown, who was the only kicker in the L.A. Ram camp this past offseason in training camp. Um, I believe they're bringing him back on practice squad at the Rams because – they went out and picked up um, Brett Maher. But Tanner Brown, he won our launching pad camp, that NFL camp I spoke of. Uh, he looks great. Um, Lucas Haversick, another one of our uh, guys who uh, has been with the Baltimore, uh, Baltimore oh my gosh, um, Indianapolis Colts uh, for the offseason. Um, and they, they signed Matt Gay to a huge contract. Matt Gay is a great kicker. We've worked with Matt in the past as well when he came out of college, getting ready for the NFL. Uh, but Lucas, they love Lucas at Indianapolis. Uh, obviously, they couldn't hold on to him, but he had a very good preseason, and he was just picked up on the practice squad by the Browns. So uh, these are several of our guys. We have some really good long, long snappers that are just right on the edge of making it. One of them is Alex Matheson, um, another one, Jack Lander, another one, Brian Corey. Uh, these guys are all right on the edge. They just need, need that opportunity, but they snap – you know, they, they got the whole package. So it's exciting to see these guys turn the corner, put the pieces of the puzzle together 
And now it's just a matter of that opportunity coming their way. Some names that we can definitely look out for as the season gets underway, see if they pop up on any of these other teams out there. You mentioned players moving from teams to teams. They've been at it for a little while. You were somebody that was an undrafted free agent. You spent, I think, your first year out of the NFL. How were you able to to stick around, find your opportunity, and and not only that time around, but for as long as you did? Well, it actually was a a few years, um, three to be exact. uh, And I was getting an opportunity to go to camps, get into preseason, and kind of build a resume. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was a blessing disguise for me because I was learning from veteran kickers that were at those teams that I was competing with, learning how to train um, their, their mental game. Uh, a big difference between a, a college player and an NFL player is the NFL player develops a better process and system for training, preparing for the game. And even during the course of the game, we call them game time routines. The What they do on the sideline to keep themselves mentally and physically ready for every opportunity. And so I was learning these things from these veterans and, and getting to kind of work my own equation. And that was a big benefit to me. So I think if I had been thrown into the NFL right off the bat, my first training camp was the Cincinnati Bengals. And in most players coming out of college, they, they automatically believe, hey, whatever – First team I go to, yeah, I'm going to be with them. I'll be here all season long. Um, Of course, that was my thought as well, but not so fast. Um, They (laughs) they sent me packing, but uh, but I learned a lot, and it allowed me to go back to the lab, as they say, and get physically stronger, more durable, more mentally tough, and understand how to cut out distractions, and um, those helped me in my career when I finally did catch on with the San Diego chargers. Right. It was 1987 when you had that chance with the Bengals, but not until 1990 when you got on with the chargers and then were there for 10 seasons. So it it took a little bit of time, but, but then you, you made it count for somebody like Blake groupie who came in here and they were competing against somebody who has been a pro bowler has been with the saints for seven years. And will Lutz, how impressive is it that he comes in and, and he wins the job as an undrafted rookie. Very impressive. And and I got to follow Blake because um, I have two kids at Notre Dame. My son was a quarterback there. So I got, to, I got to watch Blake go through his, his senior year or, or his fifth year at Notre Dame and, and kicked very, very well. I got to see him in person um, kick against BYU. We went out to the, uh, the BYU Notre Dame game, uh, at Allegiant stadium where the Raiders play and just very impressed with his, his ability, his strength, his composure. And so, uh, no surprise that he had a very strong camp and preseason in new Orleans. Uh, that is a big change. I'll be honest with you. Uh, Will Lutz has a great track record. Uh, certainly has won a lot of games and, and being a big part of uh, so much success at the Saints, um, settled a bunch of records and uh, have a lot of respect for Will. I keep in touch with him and I think the world of him. So that's a big, that's a big, that's a big switch for the, for the Saints. And it shows that Blake has done enough in the offseason training camp and preseason to give the Saints the confidence that, Hey, you know what? This guy's going to be good. Let's stick with him. Blake Groupie is 5'7". He's a smaller kicker. Have you ever seen somebody have his ability at that size? Well, <clears throat> there have been some smaller type kickers who have had very explosive legs and very great careers. Um, Blair Walsh, I got to work with Blair several times. He was on the the smaller, shorter side and had amazing strength and, and uh, <clears throat> power. Uh Cairo Santos, who's presently at the Chicago Bears. Uh, we've worked with Cairo. Um, he was at one of our combines that I mentioned earlier and did real well. And Chicago had him on a plane, you know, two days later. Uh, Cairo's another guy. And, and Jake Elliott, again, at Philadelphia, is not a big guy. Um, you know, maybe a little bigger than Blake, but I don't think by all that much. And, you know, great power. And it's been a great kicker for the Philadelphia Eagles. So, you know, it's not always the size, but it's the speed of the leg and the capability of making the right contact and, you know, having, uh, you know, the, the right contact, uh, 
with leg speed is a great combination for successful kicking. And so Blake falls into that category. What do you think is going to be the biggest challenge for him making the transition to the NFL? Well, uh, for every rookie, it, the first season's the longest. So you don't, once you, once you come out of college and you declare I'm headed to the pros, uh, you don't have an off season. You have to train and be ready for NFL combines and, and other workouts and tryouts. And then next thing you know, you're right into a mini camp and, and OTAs. You get a, you catch your breath between OTAs and training camp and then boom, you're into it. And then now you're involved in the longest season as far as games are concerned, three preseason games, 17 regular season, and hopefully the playoffs. So uh, having that endurance and pacing yourself, that's always a challenge for the young guys. Um, and then the <clears throat> here when we coach our guys, we talk about consistency um, with a capital C, you know, all caps, uh, block letters, you name it, italicize, underline. It's not only being consistent on game day, but consistent during the course of the week. So Wednesday's practice, Thursday's practice, Saturday's practice, I'm sorry, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then Sunday. Your coaches, your management, and your teammates, they want to see a professional kicker every day. So we can't have several off days and just brush it off like, yeah, but that's okay. I'm the guy. I'll be fine on Sunday. Um, you know, if you're a 15-year veteran, then you can probably wave off some of those practices. But as a young guy, you really have to confirm uh, and every <clears throat> every practice I'm your guy. I'm your choice. I'm I'm going to be best for this team, short term and long term. And so that takes a little bit of getting used to and not that you're self-imposing pressure. It's just that I have to be sharp every day. Doesn't mean you have to be sensational all pro every day, but you have to get the job done every day. And we talk about having an A game and a B game and an A kick and a B kick when for whatever reason, you're not feeling great. Maybe you had a big workout the, ne the, the previous day and you're still recovering uh, or your know, coach changes a practice and it's a little uncomfortable. Uh, and we go to our B game where we just get the job done. Mm -hmm. And so he'll learn that. Uh, he, and I'm sure he's learned it already uh, or learned some of that from Will. Um, but the team, you know, you look at your roster now, there's only one guy that has – K next to his name. There's only one guy that has P next to his name. Only one guy has LS next to his name. And so those three guys, there, there is no backup. So we have to get the job done one way or another every day we're on the field. But guys, he'll grow into that if he hasn't already. And it's it's also exciting um, because you are um, a very integral, uh, very, um, you know, he, he he is a piece of the team that if, if he's not firing uh, and the punter's not firing and the L and the and the long snapper's not firing, that can lead to wins and losses. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what's exciting. That's why they pay these guys a lot of money. Uh, and at some point, um, you certainly earlier um, in your career, you uh, you embrace that. Definitely a big part of the team. You know that you're fifth in the NFL in career point total. So you definitely have a significant impact on the team, have the ability to. When you go from kicking to your punter, Lou Headley, another undrafted free agent who usurps the, the veteran that's in the building and Blake Gillikin, he comes in with a little bit different background and a different style. How have you seen the punting style change over the past couple of years? Well, uh, the Australians have, have, have had a lot to do with that. Um, Darren Bennett, who was a teammate of mine here at the Chargers, was the first one to break into the NFL and really become a big impact punter uh, from the country of Australia. Uh, Darren was phenomenal, and he introduced the drop punt, which is the end-over-end -end punt that punters use going inside the 20. Uh, and really revolutionized the game and, and the floodgates opened from Australia. And so in college now, these Australians and, and Americans and other uh, um, 
you know, players from all over the world, they learn the rugby punt, they learn different punts and different styles and different clubs in their bag uh, to make it more difficult on the return team and more difficult on, on the returner. Um, so uh, you can't be a, you know, just a, you, you almost have to be a Swiss army knife now. It's this shot, like I hit one punt and I hit it good and that's good enough. No, you have to have more clubs in your bag and, and uh, be able to, again, keep the opponent um, on their heels and off balance. So I think that's very exciting. I also recognize that probably in the last 20 years, we'll say last 20 years, kickers and punters as a whole are more athletic. Now I'm going to get in trouble with some of my old buddies <laughs> from the eighties and the nineties, because they're going to say, Oh, we were great athletes. But back in the seventies, eighties and nineties, a lot of the kickers were kickers. Uh, you couldn't play them at safety. You couldn't play them at receiver. You couldn't play them at quarterback. They were kickers. They were punters, very talented, very talented, did some amazing things, but that's kind of where their football skills ended. Nowadays, about 20 years ago, I started watching this, this happen, uh, this pattern. Players who played other positions, extremely uh, versatile athletic players who were, who were quarterbacks, who were safeties, uh, who were running backs, um, also playing and leaning and eventually deciding to go and become a kicker or punter full time. Mm -hmm. And so you have a number of guys in the league right now that can run a four, six or better, um, you know, can bench 225, 20 times, um, have a, a 35 to 40 inch vertical. Those are all very athletic uh, stats that uh, are very impressive. And so what what happens now, now the, the records on the field, as far as kicking and punting, they keep on climbing and climbing. The bar keeps on getting set higher and higher because now there's so much more athleticism with these kickers and punters that are now entering the NFL. Zach Wood, he said that it was either a linebacker or a defensive back. That's what he came into the league as. And then he got groomed to be a long snapper. And that's kind of where he's made his headway in the league. With the way that Lou Headley kicks, you mentioned Australian rugby. I mean, that is his background. Do you think that he's going to come in and and have success with the way that the the rules have changed? Yeah, uh, Coach Darren Rizzi, that's that's your gold card right there at, at the Saints. I, I love Coach Darren Rizzi. Um, he's phenomenal, and so uh, great experience, and and uh, you know just a great coach all around. And I got to meet uh, Darren and work with him when he was at the Dolphins. Uh, he will take Lou, and I'm sure he has. He has cards up his sleeve right now of, of certain punts and certain formations um, and certain attacks that the punt team is going to have for the opponents this year. I think he thinks that Lou is very versatile and, uh, and they're going to have some surprises that should be very effective for the Saints punt team. And I think that's really exciting. So I'm excited to see the punt team this year for the Saints and see uh, what some of those um, special – um, custom punts and and philosophies that they're going to send down the field and see how the opponent the opponent um, responds to those. How much do you still keep up with the Saints football in general? Are you kind of looking across the league at some of your former, I don't know, quote unquote, players, people that you've helped develop, or do you keep up with teams that you've been on a little bit more? Um, yeah, I think I have a tendency to pay more attention to the Saints, the Chargers, the Giants. Um, I still know coaches at those teams, so that's kind of fun to, to tap in. Uh, but because of my job now of training and preparing free agents uh, and, and guys who are act actively veterans in the NFL, uh, I followed their uh, performance as well. So we have a kicker in Buffalo, a kicker in Atlanta, so on and so forth. Nick Folk is a good friend of mine. We used to train together. He just went from the Patriots um, down to Tennessee. So I pay attention to those guys, see how things are going. They'll give me a shout every once in a while. Hey, this happened on Sunday. What do you think? Was there a better answer for the situation? So I like to keep up um, with those guys that I have a re relationship with. Mm -hmm. uh, I can tell you my oldest son, Luke, uh, could tell you the roster of the Saints. If you call him up on the phone right now, he is so tapped in. 
to Saints football. Um, so he's excited about Derek Carr. And yep. so um, we're, I think everybody is. So um, we're excited about the, the offense of the New Orleans Saints and, and see where they're going to take it. How often do you get to come to games or, or do you touch base with Rizzy or some of the other guys around here? Uh, touch base with Bum, our yeah. awesome equipment yeah. manager from time to time. Uh, some of our strength guys uh, on the strength staff. Uh, Rizzy, a number of times during the course of the year, I usually see him at least once in the off season at a combine. So um, yeah, and, 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 and management for that matter. I'm always you know, sending some of our free agent film to uh, to Mickey Loomis and the crew upstairs, just as, so our guys are are getting some exposure and they're somewhere on the list up upstairs in case the Saints have a need. Sure. What is your your favorite memory from when you played here? Ooh, that's a tough one. <laughs> uh, well, um, obviously the Super Bowl was amazing. Uh, that whole season was amazing. Um, the Atlanta game, the reopening of the Superdome in 2006, that that was incredible. Uh, that there was that was as electric, as exciting, and as much attention, national attention on that game as as a playoff game. Really, a, a felt like an NFC Championship game. Um, there were celebrities all over the place, you know, Harry Connick Jr. and Spike Lee and you name it, our commissioner, everybody's on the field before the game. And uh, they had a valet for us, if you can believe that, the players, we had to actually pull our car up to another entrance and they actually valeted our car and there was a red carpet. I mean, it was crazy. <laughs> um, so that was a big game. And Steve Gleason, you know, our great friend, Steve, uh, he had the big block. And so, um, that game was a great, great, great memory. And then the first game after Hurricane Katrina, where we go to the Carolina Panthers uh, and, you know, we're supposed to lose a game because the Carolina Panthers are really good. And uh, we just went through what we went through. And the city and the Gulf Coast is still going through, still half flooded. And people are trying to find friends and family and you name it. Um, and we somehow pull off a victory in Carolina uh, we kick a field goal at the end of the game on a windy day, and that was that was pretty darn exciting. So um, I think so. Those are some of my fondest memories. Do you still have a copy of that Sports Illustrated where you were on the cover after, I after do. that game? Right. I do. A few were sent to me. So uh, I, in fact, I believe the Saints blew up one for myself and Aaron Brooks, which was really cool. And um, yeah, that was crazy. You know, fun fact: it was supposed to be LSU on that cover. And on, on the bottom right-hand corner, there's a picture of the LSU team or a couple of players in their game because they had a big victory that weekend as well. Uh, and maybe Sports Illustrated wasn't planning on us pulling out the W, but uh, we, we got the big picture. They got the small picture. So did they come here and do the photo shoot with you and Brooks? No, no. That was just a picture for they snagged from the game. Yeah. Okay. So, uh and Aaron, so he he gave me a hug when he's coming off the field after that kick. And it doesn't help that Aaron's like six ten. I look like I look like Blake Groupie. I look <laughs> like I'm five seven. Uh and I'm getting hugged by this guy who's like six ten. He looks like Shaquille O'Neal and I look like Blake. But uh it was all good. It was very exciting. Um the rest of the season wasn't that much exciting. We got, you know, sent out to San Antonio and things didn't go too well for us out there. But uh it was a, uh, it was a story. Great moment, and I'm sure, obviously, a great memory as well. I really appreciate the time that that you took to, to talk to us a little bit about what you're up to, our kicking situation here, and some of your memories here. I appreciate it, and hopefully, we'll we'll run into you at some point this season, or we'll get to catch up again. A lot going on over here. You're right, and uh, wishing you guys a lot of luck, uh, and I hope to talk to you again. Uh, please tell the specialists I said hello, good luck, and what's up. And uh, yeah, let's keep in touch, Aaron. Sounds good. Thank you so much. I appreciate the time. Thank you. Appreciate John Carney joining me. Lots going on this week. The Saints practice Wednesday through Friday. We'll have practice reports and interviews each day on NewOrleansSaints.com. Saturday is the Saints 5K kickoff run at the Dome. And Sunday, the first game of the season. 
Friday on the Saints Pod, we'll break down the Saints' first opponent with voice of the Titans, Mike Keith. Thanks for listening today, and have a great rest of your day. Thanks for listening to the New Orleans Saints Podcast. Join us three times per week on NewOrleansaints.com, the Saints mobile app, or you can download the podcast on iTunes. We'll see you next time right here on the New Orleans Saints Podcast.